So I'm, uh, I'm sitting on the boardwalk right now. I drove three and a half hours to, uh, to be in this beautiful place. You can hear the geese loving my presence behind me. Also, I'm trying really hard not to get distracted with all the other wildlife. I even had to force myself to not stop as I saw two bald eagles uh, on my way out here, so. But, gotta stick to the mission. It's my last chance to get an owl. did it we found an owl after three years welcome back everybody in today's video we're going to be talking about the three the three tips that i'm going to give you so how you can go out and find find owls yourself and if this is your first time to my channel i'm nick boris from lively productions uh, bringing you my best tips and tools to grow as a wildlife landscape and outdoor lifestyle photographer and filmmaker right now we are in the northeastern side of virginia uh, right along the border of Maryland. It is Super Bowl Sunday, and this is what I'm doing on my Super Bowl Sunday. A little weather report, it's currently snowing, which is awesome, I love it. It's like 11 o'clock, and we have this beautiful overcast uh, sky, real moody. The, the snow is, oh, looks like salt. I don't know if you can see it, there's a really cool snowflake there. So the three things I'm gonna go over in this video are researching, spotting, and ethics. But first, I'm gonna talk about ethics a lot of people especially in the area that i'm in now this is kind of a hot spot for uh, barred owls so a lot of people come here to photograph them because they're put on apps people post it on facebook they tell their friends and apparently yesterday there was cars lined up outside of this park trying to get in here to photograph these owls you get too close and you spook the owl so what do you look for uh, when you're photographing owls that uh, are, are indicators that you are encroaching on their territory. Now these are wild animals and you don't want to cause stress on them. This is their home. You don't want someone coming into your home, taking photos of you, or think about when someone gets, you know, in your personal space or gets too close to you. It causes you stress, you get anxious, um, or if you have social anxiety, then you kind of know what I'm talking about. For these animals, a safe distance is usually 100 feet. If you are setting your camera up and you're walking up to them and they turn and they look at you and they turn away after a couple seconds, then you're okay. But if they turn and look at you and they're staring at you, then you are way too close and you need to slowly back up. Otherwise you're gonna spook them and they may not go to that spot ever again. Now you have taken away the opportunity for other people to see them. Um, so just remember, look for any type of anxious movements, them watching you, uh, them bouncing from tree to tree often and then looking back at you. So keep about a distance of 100 feet, you know, from the base of the tree that they're in or from uh, from the ground. This is why a lot of wildlife photographers, we use long lenses so that we can get close in on, on uh, an animal without having to cause them any distress. So number two is gonna be your research. Now, why is research gonna be one of the next most important thing that I'm talking about? So I have spent the better part of three years researching, figuring out how I can come out here and find owls to photograph in Virginia, which are apparently very hard because I've had biologists scoff and tell me good luck. So this is not a state like the Pacific Northwest or Florida uh, where they're apparently abundant. Um, and I'm constantly seeing people post photos of them. In Virginia, they're much harder to come across. So a lot more research has to go into it. So what does that research look like? One good app is eBird, where you can actually log onto the app, create an account, and you will be able to look up, up to a 30 mile radius, I believe, uh, and out to two weeks where people are logging onto the app and posting where they are seeing the specific bird that you're looking for. That is how I found this specific location. Found it last night, 10 o'clock, drove all the way up here, four and a half hours or four hours or so and got here at seven o'clock in the morning so I could photograph this owl and I've now been hanging out with it for, for roughly about five hours. Now this app is not foolproof. I've been using it for a few months now and this is the first time it's actually worked out for me. I still ended up going on Facebook groups, which is another good thing to do. Look up your state's wildlife Facebook groups 
and I saw someone post in there and I reached out to that person, got in contact with them, and they actually drove out this morning to meet me and help me spot them. Network with the other wildlife photographers in your area to find out where these things are. And the third thing that I will say as far as research goes is learn your animal's ecosystem, learn about your animal, uh, figure out what their patterns are. You know, when are they active during the day? What do they eat? Uh, who are their predators? What type of uh, environment do they like to live in? Like the barred owl here likes swampy areas. They like to eat frogs and rodents and small things. And they'll usually perch, you know, 20, 30 feet up in a tree and they like coverage. So they're in pine trees. When they're sitting 20 or 30 feet away, when it's time to eat, they swoop down, get real low, and then they'll pick up uh, their dinner or breakfast or lunch. Figure out and learn the animal. Watch uh, videos on YouTube, uh, get field guides, go to websites um, like your wildlife management websites or your conservation websites. Uh, if you search the animal you're looking for in the state you're in, you are gonna get an abundance of information. After you've done all that research and you have your ethics down of how to ethically shoot that animal, you've checked apps, you've gone on Facebook groups, you've talked to people, you've Googled your little heart away. Now you go out into the field and you try and find these things. I have spent three years hiking, looking in trees, uh, looking for what they say, you know, the football shape of an owl, irregular formations in the trees. Those are giveaways in finding owls. Now they do tuck themselves really close to the trunk of trees and because of their rounded uh, shape, they kind of hunker in on themselves and they can be really difficult to see. That's why these are so elusive and rare because they blend in. One of the biologists put it this way, hawks, eagles, and other raptors, they are wearing essentially what I'm wearing, this you know bright, bright blue jacket. They're wearing Patagonia. They're easy to spot when they're sitting in a tree. And then you have owls. Owls are in ghillie suits. So they are completely camouflaged to their environment. They are meant to blend in. That is what makes them so hard to find. So you have to have a really good eye and train yourself to spot these things. Take your time when you're looking at trees. Don't just, don't just give quick scans, go up and down trees that you think an owl would find coverage in. I kind of worked in the last one, which is spotting and, you know, into the whole research part. But a couple other uh, spotting tips would be, yeah, look for the football size, look close to the tree trunks or the, the trunk of the tree. Um, look in heavy covered areas, uh, areas where you where you where it looks tough to get into and it's hard to see and stare at that area for a while. Get a pair of binoculars or if you have a telephoto lens, I use my telephoto lens and I'm saving up for a good pair of binoculars right now. Listen for mobbing birds. So like uh, blue jays or cardinals, sparrows, robins, crows, ravens, birds that are making a lot of noise. Like it, they're almost distressed, they're angry. That's usually because a bird of prey is in their area and they are mobbing it. So they're all calling at it, trying to get it to go away. As far as ground animals go, chipmunks and squirrels will actually chirp or bark uh, to notify the animals around them that there is a predator in the area, which is another good sign that an owl is there and you start scanning the trees, looking for the foliage of the trees around the trees that an owl would be taking cover in. If I'm forgetting anything else and you have other tips, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, if you like this video, if you found it helpful or useful, give it a thumbs up. Maybe I'll do a more in-depth one at my desk when I'm not getting snowed on. Uh, if you enjoy content like this, please subscribe to my channel. If you wanna learn camera settings or lenses, uh, you're gonna wanna check out my past previous videos uh, where I just put out some stuff talking a little bit more in depth onto the lenses that I use and why I use them. Uh, for my social media and where you can hike along with me, check out the description below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Look at how muddy I am. It was worth it though.